Good morning, everyone. Happy So What Day. I hope you're having a good Tuesday so far. We are going to be talking about some cute projects to make for back to school. Um, I say this every year, but I can't believe we're going back to school. Uh, you know, the stores are full of all the school supplies. Um, you know, it's some kids have already started, in fact. So um, I compiled a few projects that are really quick and easy makes that uh, you can create and give to all of the students in your life who are headed back to school. Also, you can make some of these items for teachers who are headed back to the classroom. So I have, um, let's see, four or five projects to share with you and some special kits and a bunch of other great stuff. So um, some of you are coming on and saying, hello, I appreciate that. Put your highs and uh, questions and comments in the comments section down below. And I'll be doing a few Q and A's throughout the live today. Also, we have a great giveaway. Speaking of back to school and teachers, um, I just realized I don't have a photo of it um, quite yet. So let me grab that. What was I thinking? Um, our giveaway today is a machine embroidery palette and it is called Hug a Teacher. Hold on a moment and let me just grab that image real fast. No matter how much I think I am prepared, I always forget something. And it was the first thing that I was going to think about or going to talk about. <laughs> oh, typing and talking at the same time. Not my strong suit. Okay, hold on. It's coming up here. Okay, so giveaway today is our Hug a Teacher palette. This is a really close up shot of the design that the thread palette comes with. Um, our thread palettes are uh, carefully curated. Uh, um, I'm sorry, again, I'm trying to talk and type at the same time. Our thread palettes include, this one has 10 spools of thread, as well as a really great uh, cross stitch embroidery design. So that's what you're seeing on the screen there is a close up of that cross stitch design. Um, I'm hoping to find an image of the actual product itself. Here we go. All right, there we go. So the palette comes with all of these great colors as well as this large scale design, which is a little hand with a little cross stitch heart in the center. And then you can sort of see there's all these great little sayings on the hand as well. Science, reading, writing. So it's a great little design for a teacher who's headed back to school. We also have a blog post, um, or I believe it's a free project on the Sulky site for how to create this little notebook cover. Um, so if you want to create a whole project, and put a little sketch pad or an organizer or just a little notebook inside. It holds this little pen. Um, that would be a great project to make for a teacher who's headed back into the classroom. All right, so that's the giveaway. And uh, I will be picking a winner at random from everyone who is liking the Sulky page, uh, liking, loving, commenting on the post. Um, you know, I even consider all of the sad and mad emojis because you know what? Sometimes that's just what we're feeling. All right. So that's today's giveaway. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I did mention, see somebody in the comments talk about our DIY lounge wrap. Where is the question? Oh, Dawn says, I loved the lounge wrap class yesterday. Awesome. So let me know, Don, did you finish the whole thing in one shot or are you going back and um, saving your progress as you go along? Uh, you know, that's the beauty of these summer sewing sessions that we are doing at our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. We've broken up these lessons within this larger session 
into these manageable chunks so you don't have to commit to sewing the entire project all at once. You can go through lesson one, and then in a few days when you have some more time to sew, go through lesson two, and so on. The platform saves your progress so you can easily go back in and pick up where you left off and continue making your lounge wrap. So glad to hear that you liked it. There is still time to register with that $5 discount. We extended it a couple of days, so you can still get $5 off of the session, um, which makes it $14.99. With that $14.99, you will get the lounge wrap pattern in order to draft your own pattern to fit you and your figure. And you will also get a bonus embroidery design if you want to embellish your wrap. So this is a pattern that you will love, love, love to make many different versions of. You know, when I'm making a garment pattern or investing in a garment pattern, I wanna make sure I'm gonna get multiple makes out of it. And this is the perfect pattern for that. So um, yeah, it says that this $5 off coupon is only valid until the second, which was yesterday, but I went ahead and extended it until the sixth. So um, yeah, I hope that you will all join in. Um, you can watch it, like I said, on demand at any time. There are multiple lessons to watch. You'll learn about pattern drafting. You'll learn about working with knits, uh, working with wovens. This pattern works with either a knit or a woven. You'll learn about the embroidery process. You'll learn customization options for the sleeves and the bands and an optional belt. There's just like so much to learn in this session. So register today if you haven't already. All right. Let's get to the project at hand today, or the first project, I should say, that I'm going to talk about, which is a really cute backpack charm. Now, this cute design that I found, I'll be showing off two. One is a llama, this one, and another one is a little sloth. These designs, if you're looking for them, you can head on over to the Sulky blog. I linked to the post in the description of this live uh, video today. So if you're not seeing all of the links, click on the little see more button and the whole description will pop up and you'll see the post for the backpack charm how to's and you can head on over there and get all the links for the designs and all of the products that I'm about to talk about that I used to create this cute little backpack charm. So my kids love backpack charms. They've got little Lego mini figs hanging off of their backpack and little keychains from places that we visited or, you know, gifts that they have received. And they're really quite proud of their <laughs> backpack charms. So I think it's a really cute, quick and easy project you can make, you know, for your kids, grandkids, um, and they'll absolutely love it. You could personalize it with a name or monogram. Um, you could also make these for luggage to identify your luggage or your kids' luggage from, you know, the masses. So it's a cute little, you know, personal touch. Uh, this little llama head um, is no more than about three and a quarter inches tall. Um, anything larger than that is really going to be too big for the backpack. Now on this picture, it looks rather large, but I'm doing a super close up of it. Um, so I think it fits with the size of the backpack very well. The sloth I'm going to show you is only about an inch and a half tall. He is getting ready to sew. So that one is a little bit smaller. So you can see kind of, um, you know, if I, if I use my hand as a reference, it's about the size of the palm of my hand or smaller. So you don't really want to find a design any larger than that for this project. Um, I looked for designs that are na that are labeled felties. Have you all heard of these designs? They are meant to be sewn onto felt and they're called felties. Who knew? I know. Um, maybe that's just been around forever and I'm just now jumping on the bandwagon. But at any rate, for those of you who did not know, you can search felties and find a bunch of these um, cute little freestanding or made for felt designs. Um, this llama I did on felt. This little sloth I did on a scrap of fleece. Uh, so that works as well. Keep in mind when you are embroidering on felt or fleece or 
velvet or even corduroy, something that has a nap to it or a fuzzy texture, you have to do what is called hoopless embroidery for the most part. That means we're hooping the stabilizer only and not the fabric because the fabric could be marred by the hooping process. The other great thing about doing hoopless embroidery is that we can use a small scrap of fabric and position it on sticky stabilizer in the hoop. And that way we don't have to use a super large piece of fabric and cut away our little motif, leaving this large scrap, right? So we can go and dive into our scrap bins and find smaller pieces of felt, smaller pieces of fleece, those types of fabrics, and stitch out our design. If you want to use something different like cork or faux leather, that would also look really cool. Definitely choose a fabric that is not going to fray because we're not going to finish these edges. The only thing that's finishing it is a uh, stitch along the perimeter of the animal. Um, or the motif that you choose to use. You could do a flower. You could, like I said, do a monogram. Um, if you do do a monogram, maybe do a circle around it, just in plain stitches. You can either add that in software or just freehand do it on your machine um, or you know, draw it on there with a removable marker. So there are lots of options for that. Okay. Let me show you my Sticky Plus stabilizer that is hooped. So uh, these other, the other thing is you can do multiple designs in one hooping. So even in a four by four hoop, I could get at least two of these, if not three, if I position them carefully in the hoop using my machine screen. I could do at least four of the little sloths. So keep that in mind too, if you wanna make multiples or if you want your little guy to have a front and back like the sloth, you could do two in one hooping. My llama um, just has nothing on the back. So it's up to you if you want a front and back, just keep that in mind when you are assembling your designs in the hoop. All right, so we will hoop the Sticky Plus and I like to use the Sulky Slitting Pen. It's a Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. But I was informed this morning that we're sold out of slitting pens. I know. They are super popular and awesome. And I wish that I had mine near me so I could show it to you. Again, I always think I'm prepared with everything. And I forget something. Um, so the... Slitting pen is really great because you can score through the paper backing of your sticky stabilizer without going through it. Um, for those of you embroiderers out there, you know the pain of going through that stabilizer and then you have kind of ruined your hoop or your hooping and you have to start again or patch it and it's just not as good as it once was. So I like to use a slitting pen, but seeing as how we are sold out of those right now. You could use a regular pin, like a sewing pin, okay, to score it. Um, just be really mindful that pins are very sharp and can go through both layers. So I highly suggest that slitting pen. And if you don't have one already, you might just want to wait uh, for it to come back in stock. <laughs> All right, so after you... Uh, get all of the paper backing off of your stabilizer. This is what your hoop will look like. So you've got that sticky surface within the inner hoop ring and you can stick your fabric to it, your felt or your fleece or whatever no fray fabric you're using for your design. If you find a cute little animal using a cork fabric or a faux leather or this you know, great textured felt or fleece is a great choice. If you're going with a flower, something like uh, that's not furry or an animal, it still looks good on these fabrics. But cork or faux leather would hold up really, really nicely, like I said. All right, so embroider your design according to the color chart that came with your design collection or your individual design. People are asking where the designs have come from. 
If you go to the description of the post today for the live video, you will see a link for Backpack Charm How To's. That link will take you to the blog post that has all of the resources listed on it. I was going to individually list out every single product I'm talking about today, but quite honestly, I'm talking about so many things that the post was going to be so long. So I decided to link to the blog instead where you could get all the information, including all of the directions that you need with your supply list. So head on over to that blog post and you'll find links for all the designs that I'm featuring today. All right, so after your stitch out is complete, you will gently lift up on your felt or no fray fabric to tear it away from your stabilizer. It's really as simple as that. And then you can remove any excess just from the perimeter of your design. You can see on my sloth here, I have a little bit of stabilizer remaining, but I made sure that it was removed along that outer edge. Um, because the rest of it's going to be enclosed in the backpack charm. You don't really have to try and get rid of all of it. Um, it actually provides a little bit more stability for your little guy while he's hanging on the backpack. So there's really no sense in, you know, killing yourself over picking out all of that little, those little bits of stabilizer. Just make sure that it's clean around that edge so that you don't see it after you sew your pieces together. Oops. All right, so here you see my two little sloths. And someone did ask, do you also put stabilizer on the top of the fuzzy fabric? And yes, I do. Thank you for saying that because I forgot to mention it. You can see right here on my sloths, one, I have removed my sulky salvi topper. The other one still has the topper attached. Um, Sulky Solvy is a water soluble stabilizer that we put on top of fabrics that have a nap, um, such as fleece, felt, all these kind of fabrics I'm talking about. You wouldn't necessarily need it on the cork or the faux leather, but if your fabric has a fuzzy texture to it or a nap that goes one direction or the other, um, kind of pet your fabric one direction, put the Solvy on top, and then do your stitch out. The Solvy is going to make it so that your stitches are sitting proudly on top of the fabric surface rather than sinking into the fabric pile. So you'll have a nice pronounced embroidery when you're finished. So yes, I use the Sulky Solvy on the top as well as the Sticky Plus on the bottom. So you'll have to remove the Solvy from the right side of your design. And you know, there's a fair amount of stitches on these little felties. Um, this sloth design was actually from a finger puppet collection. So if you find a freestanding or standalone design, sometimes they're called, um, that isn't labeled felty design, sometimes that can work too. Check and make sure that there's a, some nice out, a nice outline stitch around the motif um, because that's going to be what you follow to sew your two motifs together or your front and back in the case of the llama. All right, so there you see my salvi on the little sloth. So that's got to be removed. Another good uh, way to remove the salvi if you don't want to run the entire thing under running water is you can take a Q-tip or cotton swab and saturate it in water and then run your wet cotton swab along the outer stitches of the design, and that will release that solvy. It will dissolve it just around the stitches so that you can release it. Um, I really like that method uh, when I don't want to necessarily get my entire piece of fabric wet uh, because, you know, I'm impatient and I want to go to the next step and I don't want to have to wait for it to dry. <laughs> so quite honestly, I like that method of removal of the Solvy. But you could also just rinse it under running water, let the little guy dry flat on a towel, and then go on to the next step. All right, so here you can see I've got two llamas. Um, but I decided to create two individual llamas with just plain felt on the back. 
So I was getting a little bit more mileage out of my stitch outs, but you can certainly have a front and back like I mentioned. All right, so if you're doing one where you don't have another stitch out to follow, just simply place your trimmed up llama, which you will trim it up just beyond those outer perimeter stitches. Trim up your front llama, put it over another little scrap of felt, and then simply cut out the backing for your backpack charm. All right, this, the rayon thread looks so, so good on felt. It just really is vibrant and pops. I absolutely love it. All right, so now we've got to insert our little hanging piece for our swivel clip. And what I'm using is just a little scrap of cork fabric. Again, you want a fabric that's not going to fray. And I wanted something a little bit stronger than the felt. So I happen to have tons of uh, cork fabric little scraps left over from bags and things like that that I just cannot bring myself to toss because look, I found a reason to keep it <laughs> right here right now with the backpack charms. So you'll create a little uh, rectangle and make it into your hanging loop. And you'll want to put your little swivel clip, the little D-ring part of your swivel clip, inside that upper edge fold of your hanging loop and then position it through both layers of your little motif or your little animal, your monogram, so that it is sandwiched nice in there. This would have a swivel clip if I had another one. <laughs> I ran out of swivel clips making the samples. At any rate, you will put this in through the upper edge, just center it there and use wonder clips to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. So I really like using these mini wonder clips. I have a pack of 50 of them and they are available at sulky.com now. Um, the mini wonder clips have a skinnier end to them or a skinnier clip to them. I'll show you next to the regular size. So this is a standard wonder clip size and then this is the mini one. You see the difference? The mini one, it's so great for these small projects because it doesn't get in the way, but it still does the job of clipping your fabrics together. So I really, really, you know, I have all sizes of wonder clips. Let's be real because they're the best invention ever. <laughs> all right. So clip, clip, clip your two layers together with your little hanging doodad at the top and your swivel clip attached. And then you'll take it over to the sewing machine. There's my little sloth. Then you'll take it over to the sewing machine and simply follow those outline stitches that your machine embroiderer, your embroidery machine already did. Those stitches that you followed to cut out your motif, you will simply stitch right over top of them to secure your pieces together. It's as simple as that. Really quick and easy project. There's the back of my little llama. And all finished. I mean, the embroidery machine did most of the work for me. All I had to do was hoop it, find a little scrap of felt, and stitch it out. And the sulky rayon thread, the salvi, the uh, sticky plus, those are really the products that you want for this project, making your life so much easier. And these little D ring swivel clips, you can find them at your local fabric store pretty easily. They come in packs of two sometimes um, or more. Uh, you can probably also find them on Amazon, um, but you want a relatively small one. You don't want it to overwhelm the rest of your backpack charm. This one is a half inch diameter, so no larger than that, I would say. For your hanging loop, you could also use a piece of grow grain ribbon um, a patterned ribbon would be cute. You could also make a fabric loop out of just a stable quilting cotton. Maybe add some interfacing like some uh, soft and sheer extra to the fabric and then make a fabric tube um, and then sew that as your hanging loop. So 
Lots of options to personalize this and use things you already have in your stash to make tons of these for all of your littles headed back to school. Okay, so another great project that we all probably have made for back to school or for ourselves, for traveling, for makeup brushes, for art supplies, for sewing notions, is a zippered pouch. Now, what I really like about this zipper pouch is it has a prism shape to it. So it's triangular, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So that kind of gives it a little bit more room to hold more stuff. It's also sized perfectly for your favorite pens and pencils, but like I said, you could use it to hold just about anything. So this little pouch has a hand embroidery design on it, and what we like to recommend for hand embroidery is the Sulky Cotton Petites thread. Cotton Petites um, are 12 weight threads coming in all of the great Sulky colors. And one strand of this thread equals two strands of traditional embroidery floss. So you, can, you don't have to contend with as many strands while you're sewing and it is stored on a snap spool. So you simply gently pop the end of your spool open. Both sides do it and grab the thread that you need, thread your needle, wrap it around the snap spool and then snap it shut. That's why it's called a snap spool because it makes that great little sound. So, you don't have to contend with all of these skeins of floss in your project bin, getting all over the place. You can store it on the snap spool. The other great thing is then you can also use it in your sewing machine. Use a larger size needle, a 9014 or even a 116, depending on your fabric choice. And you can do, use it for top stitching, decorative details. So it's kind of a double duty thread. But at any rate, that's what is used for this cute little embroidery design. Again, you could embroider a name on this. Um, you could embroider a little phrase, um, like too cool for school or something like that would be really cute. So for this, not only will you want to use the sulky cotton petites, but also, the design is printed onto Sulky Stick and Stitch. Stick and Stitch is a water soluble stabilizer that you can run right through your printer to put on your design, or you can draw on it. Let's say you wanted to write someone's name or write a message to someone in your handwriting so that they have it when they're at school. Maybe it says, I love you, or make today a great day, something like that. You can draw on the stick and stitch or print it out in your favorite font, cut it out around the motif, stick it right to the fabric right side, sew through it, and then rinse it away when you're done. It is the greatest transfer method for hand embroidery and you will all love it. So again, the pattern for this bag um, is no longer available, <laughs> of course, but I found an almost identical prism zipper pouch bag pattern. Um, and I updated the blog post to reflect that pattern so you can find it very easily. Um, but again, it has this really cute triangular shape to it. So I really like that too. Anything that takes a really easy pattern or what we normally think of as a flat zipper bag and just kind of elevates it a little bit, you know, it just gives it a little special quality to it. Um, so I absolutely love that when I am making something. So here is the finished design that this designer did on this pouch. And this has all that stick and stitch rinsed away and the fabric has been dried flat on a towel and now it's ready for the next part of the construction. Here you can see that little triangular area on the end of the pouch. So the ends look like this, and then there's just a simple zipper that goes across the top. So 
Really, it's a blank canvas for all kinds of different embellishment. You can do machine embroidery on here. You can do decorative stitching. You can quilt through these layers um, and really make it your own. You know, zipper pouches are just easy to sew and fun to embellish. And here is a look inside this particular zipper pouch. So um, I love a zipper pouch for back to school. My kids on their school supply list, it's so random. It'll say a, you know, five by or four by 13 inch supply bag. I'm like, really? So I just make one. It's so much easier. Plus, then they get to pick their fabric. They can pick their embroidery design if they want to embellish it. They can even help make it themselves. And then they're getting a little bit of sewing education on top of being proud that they made something that goes in their school bag. All right, so I'm just going to go through the comments here and make sure I'm keeping up with everyone. Lots of you saying you love the petites. So amazing to work with. I agree. Oh, found them on Amazon in a 50 pack. I think maybe you're talking about the swivel clips. So now you can make 50 backpack charms. That's so awesome. <laughs> Denise says, I have started using my 12 weight sulky for hand quilting. Perfect. It's also great for sashiko, which would make a really cool little um, design for that zipper pouch. If you did some rows of sashiko stitching by hand, great idea. Catherine says, where do we get the designs? Um, those are all listed in the blog post. So in the description of today's post, you will find a link for Backpack Charm How-Tos. Just click on that link. You'll find the list of all the supplies, including the links for those embroidery designs that I just showed. All right, so let's move forward. I have another really cute project. This is a, if I can find it, insulated lunch bag. What a cute little project to make for someone headed to school, especially headed to school for the first time. If you have littles headed off to preschool or kindergarten, a really cute bag to make for them with an in-the-hoop applique design of this great little unicorn. So this bag pattern is available at Desiree's Designs, so Desiree'sDesigns.com. Again, I link to it in the description of today's post. It's a really cute little pattern and you use insulated batting in between your layers of cotton for the lunch bag. That way it kind of holds the coolness, right? You get your little um, ice pack in there and you're good to go for the, for the school day. So this cute little unicorn design, Desiree also used it for a webinar project that we did with her, and I'll go over that in just a moment, but here's another picture of that cute design. Again, you can dive into your stash and find fabrics for the unicorn face and then match it to a really fun unicorn print fabric, you know, add some rainbows to it, and the kids are just going to love it. You can personalize it with a name, put an additional embroidery design on the back, so you can have lots of fun with this particular pattern. All right, so, oh, this is showing the Velcro closure on the bag. So easy to get in and out of um, and just a great little back to school gift. All right, so this unicorn design, Desiree um, actually did a webinar with Sulky a few years ago uh, for a hooded towel. And you can see this cute little guy wearing that little unicorn towel. And we have a kit that has the unicorn design collection. It comes with a white towel and a black towel for the hood. It comes with your sulky thread and stabilizers that you need to create this cute little towel. So you know what? If you have a little, little kid who maybe isn't large enough for school, they deserve a cute little gift as well. So maybe make them a little unicorn a uh, towel, hooded towel, and you can make your lunch bags as well because you'll already have that design file. 
So really cute little project I thought I would show you since it related to the lunch bag. So this is everything you get in that kit. Seven spools of sulky thread, two different stabilizers, the towels I mentioned, and Desiree's design CD, which not only has a unicorn, but it has these cute little dogs, a little hedgehog. So you get a whole collection. You don't have to necessarily make the unicorn uh, when you grab this kit. So that's a just really great little idea. I love getting a kit that has everything I need in it. And I could just start doing the embroidery and I don't have to worry about, you know, finding the right stabilizer. What thread and stabilizer and fabric and everything, you know, that just cuts out all of that planning time and it's ready to go. Okay, another thing I wanted to show off here. Oh, oh, before I get to this cute little quilt, which I know it's not a school supply, but I'll show you all why I included that. Um, I wanted to show you another cool thing we have at sulky.com because if you're doing hand embroidery, let me just show you here. If you're doing hand embroidery on an area that is a little bit awkward to put in a little hoop and you want a little bit more stability while you are doing your hand sewing, because you know, the stick and stitch is a stabilizer. So you don't really need a hoop when you're sewing through it because it keeps your fabric nice and flat. However, with a piece that's small like this, you know, this is just the front part of that triangle bag. It can become a little awkward, especially if you have a little bit of arthritic hands and fingers like I do. My thumbs are not what they used to be. I like to use a little hoop. Well, we have these new things at sulky.com. They are from Clover and it's called a stitch dome. Have you guys seen these before? It's a small little domed shaped hoop, essentially. So you can stick your stick and stitch onto the fabric, put it over the little dome, and then you secure it with a little ring, much like a hoop. And then not only is it hooped, but it is also popped up for you. So you can see what you're doing so well. It's, it's the best thing. And it actually, you know, since it's this metal dome, you're not going to sew through it. Whereas if it was like a cotton, a cotton ball or something, your needle would go right through it. Well, since it's this kind of metal dome, your needle kind of hits it and just goes through the fabric. So it's a really great little tool if you like doing handwork or if you're doing a handwork design in a tight spot, like this pencil case or the collar of a shirt, something like that, grab one of these because it's, it's really a game changer. It really just makes your life so much easier. Okay, someone says, open the package so we can see it. Great idea, let's open it. So here is the little metal dome. You'll put your fabric on top. And then this little ring, it's like made out of neoprene or something. So it's stretchy, but it still goes back to shape, making it taut. So let me find a piece of fabric. So you'll put your fabric on top of your dome and then you'll put your little neoprene deal. It's kind of hard to hold it up in the air and get it done. Put your little neoprene thing, ring, I should say, around the outer edge of the fabric. And bear with me because I got it along the edge and so it's not cooperating. There we go. And part of it, see how that um, neoprene ring, part of it you could see on top, part of it you can see along the back. It's so nice and taut. Plus, you don't have multiple hoop rings to contend with. You just have your little neoprene 
ring. And so now it's ready for sewing. Now, of course, I would also have my printed stick and stitch on here, but you can see how when you're sewing, your needle runs in to the little metal dome and you can come right out along to your next stitch where your stitch needs to go following the lines of your pattern. So, I mean, genius. What an awesome little project. And it fits so nicely in a little project bag. Whereas if you had a 10 inch hoop, um, you know, that's not very easy to take with you on the plane, train, car, all those good things. So really great little product. Grab one up. I don't, I know we don't have very many in stock, so get yours while you can. All right. Linda says, gotta have one. I know. Love it, love it. All right, let me get back to that cool little quilt I was showing you. The reason I'm showing you a quilt on a back to school post is because this is another one of Desiree's really great projects. It's called the Color Me Chameleon Quilt. It is another webinar that she did with Sulky. If you want to get any of these past webinars and watch them and get all of the freebies associated with them and the presentation materials, you can go to sewingonline.sulky.com. You can add the unicorn towel to your library. You can add the Color Me Chameleon to your library. Watch how this comes together. The chameleon in the center of this quilt is all done with these special fabric paint uh, pencils. They look like colored pencils, but you activate them like with water. So they make almost like a watercolor look. And the fabric that comes with the kit for this is this prepared for dyeing fabric, PFD. So you'll get the PFD fabric. You get all these other fabrics that you see on the quilt top. You get a special roll of sulky stabilizer because you need quite a bit because you're making all of these great embroidery designs in the hoop, including that center focal point chameleon. And you'll also get the sulky thread that you need. Then you can head on over to Desiree's designs and get those special fabric uh, pencils. They're so cool. But another reason that I wanted to show you this is because the chameleon design, it almost looks like you know, a, a coloring design, right? I mean, essentially that's what it is. We're just coloring on fabric, but you could sew these out chameleon style, make a backpack, a zipper tote, a drawstring bag, and you can have kids use fabric markers and color in their own chameleon. I thought that was such a great idea. So you can make a quilt for you and then make some stitch out samples for the kids or grandkids to color in. Set the color with your iron. You could use our sulky iron on transfer pens for this because they are permanent. Um, and even though you don't need to transfer anything with them, you could use them to color in the chameleon and then make a project for the kid that you're working with using their, essentially their artwork. So I thought that was a really great kind of double duty on that kit as well. All right. So all that to say, we have Desiree coming back again next Tuesday, August 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We love Desiree so much. We've done a lot of webinars with her. We did a steampunk pumpkin pouch last year that was really popular before Halloween. So we're doing another Halloween themed project with Desiree. She has the greatest in the hoop designs. They are just so well digitized and her artwork is so unique and so fantastic. So she's coming on back. I think this is her fourth webinar now with Sulky and we will be learning how to make this in the hoop Halloween themed mug rug. What's great about it is not only can you make a mug rug, you can also make a tote, a pillow. She's also including these cute cat and pumpkin designs as individual embroideries. So if you want to use them as applique designs on you know, a different project, backpack, t-shirt, um, 
quilt, something like that. All of those designs are isolated as individual designs in the collection, so you can do it that way. They also come as SVG files. So if you have a cutting machine, but not necessarily a machine, uh, an embroidery machine, you can use your cutting machine, cut out these great motifs, use the same uh, products in the kit to either create your own mug rug without the embroidery machine, create a tote, a pillow, and so on. So this is a triple duty, if not more, project and kit as well from Desiree's Designs. You can find this kit at sulky.com. They are telling me right now that the kits are going fast. So if you're joining us for the webcast next week, get your kit order in. It's already on sale for only $39.99. Make sure you get your kit um, because, you know, Desiree's kits go fast. They go really fast. So it's going to be a fun time. All right. My last and final project that I'm going to show off today is this, speaking of mug rug, it's a little apple mug rug or coaster set, really. These are only five inches um, square. So it's really more of a coaster than a mug rug. A mug rug is a little bit larger. Um, it's really meant for, let's say, a coffee cup and a treat, right? So that's the size of a mug rug. But this is really more of a coaster size, I would say. This is all paper pieced using Sulky Paper Solvy, another one of my favorite products from Sulky. Paper Solvy is a printable product that also washes away once your piecing is complete. So if you head on over to the link that I put in the live post for today, um, I link to a blog post where you can get this free Apple paper piecing pattern. So you'll print it out right onto your Paper Solvy and start building your block on the Paper Solvy. Again, you can dive into your stash find some really cute fabrics, make a coaster set for a teacher who's headed back to school. That would be such a great, you know, welcome to 2021-22 uh, school year, I think. So here you can see the layers. You'll need, you know, a little bit of batting, just like you're making a quilt sandwich, but you're making a little coaster. So it's quick and easy and fun project. You'll need backing, batting, and your paper pieced apple front. And I just wanted to show you the back, how all the paper solvy has been rinsed away. This has been dried, pressed flat from the wrong side. Look at those perfectly pieced pieces. <laughs> That's what paper solvy is going to get you. That's what paper piecing um, is going to get you is perfectly pieced apples. So then you can add a little bit of quilting and it's really cute to add some nice little leaves to your apple. You could, you know, do some swirls. You could really just quilt in the ditch of all the seams. You could further personalize this and put a monogram right in the center of your apple. So just so many ideas you can do with this free pattern. And then here's a nice little set. You know, it doesn't take much time to create these kind of assembly line style or if you have multiple kids at the same school, all of their teachers can get one, including the principal, and they all have something a little bit um, the same, yet different by picking different fabrics for each recipient. So, all right, well, that's my show and tell today for back to school. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, there's a lot, a lot of links in the description of today's post, so head on over. Um, Click the little see more button. You'll find all the designs, the free patterns, the full how to's, everything that you need for all of these projects. And be sure to sign up for the webinar and add those legacy webinars that I showed you today to your library while you're at it, while you're there. Uh, you can watch those on demand at any time. Um, they're kind of our throwback webinars, but they have such great information and um, I think you will really enjoy them. Like I said, those kits are going fast. Um, I was just informed we only have about 26 kits left. So grab your kit. Um, and I will be talking more about Moonlight Serenade next week, as well as some more fun, spooky projects as we get closer and closer to Halloween. So have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you on another So What next Tuesday. 
Bye.